Harrison Mike at Night Special Cinematic Movies Edition. We are talking flicks, how they've impacted our culture, what they've meant to people over the years, why isn't Top and Tom Cruise considered a great actor. There's stuff you want to talk about, there's stuff I want to talk about, but I'm going to let you lead the conversation. This uh, entire episode is uh, brought to you by Apple i14 Pro for your budding cinematographers out there. The camera doesn't get any better. And one of our other sponsors we want to welcome to is that gimbal uh, that does the trick for you. And it holds an iPhone 14 perfectly. For you budding Quentin Tarantinos out there who have nothing but a phone and a gimbal, have at it, my friends. Uh, we got Mike Knight. I'm Chris okay. Kelch. He's a stand-up comic. I'm an improv comic. But we both love cinema. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. The cinema. Now, Chris, you know I respect, if nothing else, your sure. your, your movie acumen. Right. And the, 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 the computer-like database you have. Sure. Let me ask you, why do we as film goers and film appreciators love the bad guy, if, if not as much more than the good? Nobody has pictures of Luke Skywalker <laughs> on their bumper. I think because the bad guy is flawed, mm -hmm. and I think we associate with the flaws of the bad guy. He's a damaged individual, and uh, he's been hurt. Even the quintessential bad guy, Darth Vader, be became like that. He was, was uh, misled by an emperor, mm. lost his wife and child, so he's a very angry man. <laughs> around and Fair force enough. chokes everybody, and that's his way of acting out. Fair so what I'd be, I'd be doing the same thing if I sure, was in right. spot. So I think bad guys are just more real. Like who are the great bad? You know, uh, Jack Nicholson in the uh, The Shining, in The Shining, in The Departed when he played Frank Costello. You got Those to. types of bad guys are so much. Even more the anti-heroes are more. You root for them almost more. Al Pacino in. Any any film Al Pacino's been in, <laughs> he's never been the good good guy. I know he's Michael the bad guy. Polio he's played the... the devil. He's played mafia bosses. He's ah. played a, 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 a crazy Cuban guy. Get killed, walk like a donkey. Remember <laughs> <laughs> he eat in Hannah? Get killed, walk in your donkey. <laughs> he's yeah. You you got to root for that, right? You know, I think I think DC as a franchise should stop calling themselves DC and call themselves Batman Joker and friends cuz nobody cares about anything else they have going on. So it's League whatsoever. basically the League of Justice but Batman and Joker and Cuz you really only care about what is the Joker doing and who is he going against. Who else I you know you got you guys know the Marvel and the DC universe way better than I do. In the sure. DC universe that was Batman. I'm trying to remember this from growing up so bear sure. with me. Batman, Robin, exactly. Aquaman. <laughs> Who cares? You're right. No really, else. really. If I start drowning in my bubble bath, <laughs> <laughs> Aquaman's gonna crash. He had a limited, <laughs> limited skill set. So Aquaman if goes not, suck an egg. <laughs> and indeed, he would not get a lot of pings. If Aquaman ever came trotting over on his seahorse, <laughs> I'd push him. A limited skill set. Limited. We don't call that really guy in until the end. One of the scariest movies I've ever seen, ever. And it's not like a horror horror movie. It was seven. Oh, God. And that's because oh, Kevin God. Spacey played possibly the one of the craziest bad guys in the world. Mark you, Seven comes out, I think, within a week's time of Usual Suspects coming out. Uh, with Kevin Spacey. With Kevin Spacey As playing. As Herbal Kent, or do you think... Kaiser Spacey! Back when I was uh, playing in that uh, barbershop car quartet. <laughs> <laughs> Chaz Palmont, Terry Sissendome, Giancarlo Esposito, who would go on to play on. Gus Fring from names? Breaking Bad. He they, was in it. He played an all-time bad go. guy. The, uh, the, the... Chaz Palmont, Terry <laughs> played uh, What's-His-Face in uh, Bronx Tale. And, all kinds of bad Yeah, guys. of course. And then, and then you got, you know, that other Baldwin. <laughs> you got the, the, Emilio, the Emilio Estevez of Baldwin. Steven the Blonde. <laughs> Uh, but that movie, I went back and I watched it a couple weeks ago. Sure. Usual suspects. A um, couple of guys really stood out. Uh, 
it launched the career of Benicio del Toro. Could not understand a word he was saying. The only line he had, he mumbled on and he goes, How that guy's supposed to know every job we do in New York? <laughs> That's the only line I remember. I was like, vaguely, he said, mumbling the whole time. He was the whole time. Let me, let me take it one step farther. So not only did Denzel not win an Oscar until he played a bad guy, but I'll take it to Will Smith. Yeah, I do not put him up there in the conversation of great actors, and the only reason why never played a bad guy, never not once. Who was the bad guy Denzel played that he won for? Uh, Alfonso in Training Day. And he didn't win for Frank Lucas, and did not win for Lucas, did not win for Malcolm X, but he won for Training Day. One peace, my peace. peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> they built jail because of me. <laughs> oh, man. Take. I need that money. Take. <laughs> no, no, you said it. You said no, I wanted to be here for training. You said it. Ah, no, that's my. That's a Why terrible. Why my friend Jake? Because he knows my first name. <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible white boy's imitation of that song. No, no, no. You said it. No. Sergeant Barnes in Platoon. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. gotta have. You gotta have a backup. Death. Every Rocky movie. What do you know, know about death? death? Yeah, that's every tough Rocky movie is based on the bad guy. Drago. You got Drago. Clubber Lang. Clubber Lang. Creed. And, then, and the uh, the the uh, the promoter, the fake Don King, <laughs> the fake Don oh, King himself. Yeah. Yeah. Touch me and I'll uh, sue. Yeah. Touch that. me and I'll sue. Oh, I forgot about that. Guy. Exactly. You don't even remember who he was fighting there. He was fighting Tommy Gunn Morrison. That's right. God, was that five? Was that five? Fifteen, five, <laughs> whatever one. <laughs> All right, so you, so you, you crack me up because you are a dedicated cinema, cinema guy, but it sounds like you're like me. Like You like all kinds. You like the bubblegum kind. You like all. the serious kind. You like comedies. You like it? You like it all? I struggle with musicals, although... Yeah, yeah. I, I struggle with musicals. Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> Suddenly, Seymour. <laughs> Rick Moranis. Murray in there Murray. might be the funniest. That's the professionalism <laughs> that I admire when he's getting his teeth thrown. <laughs> yes, that's the only scene he's ever done with Steve Martin. How did Bill How, Murray that's a crime. not make a movie that's with a Steve Martin? That's a crime. That's a crime. Do you remember the the? The Three Amigos? Yeah, Chevy Chase, Martin Short, Steve Martin. Got a question for you. What's that? Martin Short, by most kitten, uh, people who, who look at him go, that's a brilliant guy. He's very sure. brilliant. Not a film guy. There's something about his He's performances vaudeville, right? that, yeah, it's tiring. Like, yeah. you can take Martin Short in two, maybe three-minute bits, yeah. but on screen with that manic thing he yeah. does yeah yeah, it's, yeah oh it's like after a while it's like i'm exhausted like i could see it's, if you take rick moranis he kind of has that gitchy thing and nobody ever did it but i could see rick moranis pulling across like a a serious like a dramatic role that he I had a buy. nice run he did the ghostbuster he was a second city guy so he came up with john candy Eugene sure. Levy came up out of Canada, but he wasn't a member of the theater troupe. He was like mm. a DJ in Toronto, so mm. he wasn't an actual actor, but they liked him, and he met him at parties and stuff, mm. and so he gradually became an SCTV guy, when he was running away, When he was running away from that, that, that gigantic wildebeest pit bull demon in Ghostbusters, yeah. I was scared for my life. Yeah, he's a good, he was a really good piece, and I think a lot of people liked him. Good, you know, like a Canadian low presence type yeah. of guy. Uh, loved him in Ghostbusters, had a nice career, like in Little Giants, Parenthood, things like that. He got on a, he got on a nice run in the late 80s and 90s, was, but then uh, he kind of disappeared. That was when the Second City was really pumping out gold. Yeah, it was real, it talent. really was. Yeah, as far really as talent, was. man. Back to your point, Will Smith, Probably, and I, and again, I don't want to stop in the lines, but that first black actor, that white audience is really excited. Gravitated towards him, yeah. Yeah, and everyone loved him. I loved him in uh, uh, Independence Day. Yeah. I loved him in uh, in all the stuff he did in the night. His Men in Black is a blast to watch. It is. If you just need to turn off your brain and enjoy a movie, yeah. it is fantastic. And he's made a career of that. But stuff. don't expect me to 
to to buy into you as a thespian. If you're not giving me the Phantom and the Opera, you well, gotta give me the both. The last now was, crawling. Then what was Hancock? <laughs> he was pretty dark in Hancock. He was a, a superhero that what was a he drunk. was that he was that you just expect him, you just expect him to be uh, to just be to, to just win out. You don't think anybody's gonna die. He's not gonna make a bad decision. He's not gonna tarnish his image on film. Now in real life, <laughs> Uncle Garvey. What happened? He makes he makes some bad decisions. What happened? I don't. I still look at that thing and go, "What are you doing? Are you sticking up for your wife? What are you trying to do? You trying to show everyone you're an alpha?" You don't. Chris Rock, God bless him, did the right thing and said. I forgive all of it. I'm walking away from it. Don't need to press charges. I think he did the right thing just to drop it. And you can make the argument. Chris Rock played a crackhead in... Um, New Jack City. New Jack City. Which is not the cleanest character of all time. Ice T. Judd Nelson. Wesley Snipes. Sonny great... Spoon. What was that guy's name? The good looking cop. The really good looking black dude. Uh... Played Sonny Spoon. His dad was a director. You know, but you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, very cool movie. Mario Van Peebles. Yeah, Mario yeah. Van Peebles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're a pro. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm, I'm sitting. Hey, up man, how you used to be <laughs> pookie <laughs> with the bike? <laughs> oh, am man. I my brother's keeper? Yes, yeah, yeah, I yeah. am. I never liked that pretty motherfucker. Anyway. Stop off, Grandpa. <laughs> Rock a bye, baby. Yeah, I it mean, was a brutal. And movie. Wesley Snipes, if Wesley Snipes' acting was on uh, uh, an NBA team, he's he's giving you thirty-two, seven and three a night consistently, man. Good actor. Uh -huh. Good actor. And him and 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 tragically, him and Woody Harrelson only have two movies. They need a. Th that was chemistry. Man. That was good in the uh, in the basketball movie. They were in White Men Can't Jump, and they were in Money Train, Money Train. which I believe was uh, Jennifer Lopez's first. Nice, Woody Harrelson. I'm glad you brought him up. I Tremendous. Back, I, like I just Harrelson. that is a guy that just works. Swiss he Army Knife. That guy. He continues to work and do three solid movies a year. They're not amazing. They're all stand up yeah. doubles. Yeah. But he's worked with. I went back, watched Zombieland <laughs> One and Zombieland Double Tap. Freaking hilarious! Would you call him a character actor? I would call him a character actor. Right? I would because you he, he does different work in the Coen yeah. Brothers when he played that uh, the guy with the yeah, 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 yeah. No Country. You don't. For Old you don't Man. have to. Uh, we don't have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone always says that. <laughs> <laughs> I would say he doesn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> he's not like you. Well, he's not even like me. He's just a regular psychopath. <laughs> you can stop to that. He has a great has a character. <laughs> great character actor. But he's been doing it. He's been doing it for thirty years. I saw him on Cheers, and I went, "Oh, that guy's not going to yeah. be anything. He's got one trick pony." Thirty years cranking out films, and he has a charm, and he almost winks at the camera every. Yes. Yes. Almost wings at the camera every time. I film like season. that about him. Because when you bring Jack Nicholson on, you're paying Jack Nicholson to be Jack Nicholson. Yes, you are. Oh, you're a werewolf. That When he's not a werewolf, he's Jack Nicholson. Oh, you're a sociopathic writer who's getting possessed by a hotel, but when you're not doing that, you're Jack Nicholson. Uh, you're really supposed to be Whitey Bolger, but you're actually just Jack Nicholson, <laughs> Jack Nicholson. pretending to be Whitey Bolger. <laughs> but Woody, he does whatever you need him Next to do. Next time I tell you to bury someone in the mask, bury them in the mask. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. With a terrible boss. That boss yeah, accent. He was Shit. the worst. He was the, was the worst, but it was Jack, and I couldn't yeah. take my eyes off him. How many movies did we let Sean Connery get away with being the the most Scottiest Scott to ever Scott? If you if you but he the, was supposed to be something else. If a else. Scotsman could drive a Russian submarine <laughs> and pull that off. He could do that. You remember how he one ping only, Richard. <laughs> one ping only. Which, by the way, Highlander, number one, might have to be up there in my top ten. Man. Really, Christopher Lambert. I have a theory. I've run up by Scott. Every generation thinks that they came up with the best stuff. Oh, we had the best music. Sure, yeah, of course, movies. of course. When I say my generation had the best stuff. 
I am not joking i you know even i go back and look at i was just coming out of college or mm. when uh, the hunt for red october came out i oh. went back and rewatched the hunt for red october it is the freaking it is the perfect movie the way it's beat it out yeah. hero's journey alec baldwin has to go on yeah. this journey no one believes him he's got to convince people he meets interesting characters along yeah, the way yeah. the bart mancuso uh, submarine captain that he meets yeah. up with all these guys love them they're just great fun character actors to watch and we don't have i fear we don't have that it we're losing the joy of the character actor and sean connery sound like he just came out of moscow <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even try <laughs> 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 More tea, anybody? <laughs> I know that part, but the movie's so good you overlooked that. Baldwin's performance was great. I thought he was tremendous. Best, I thought he was the best Jack Ryan ever. He and I must hear, and I love Harrison man. Ford, but Harrison Ford's Jack Ryan was really vanilla compared to his. Harrison Ford always sounds like he's passing a kidney stone. <laughs> It's always, get off my plane. You find that man. <laughs> oh, that's it. I, I didn't kill my wife. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care. <laughs> Richard, put that gun down. Now. Um, Chicago guys love that movie. <laughs> Shots. Um, all right. Uh, so let's talk about our boy Tom Cruise. Who and you and I had this conversation off camera before the start, and sure. we both agreed the guy is one Doesn't hell miss. of an actor, Doesn't one hell of a miss. leading actor, and really and can be if he wants to. Funny if you ever saw him play that studio head in Tropical Thunder. One of the fun you cannot I'm make Tropical Thunder. Your face. You cannot make Tropic Thunder anymore at all ever. <laughs> it's it's over. You cannot make that. Too risky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Booty juice. <laughs> You can't. I think the filmmakers of Tropical Thunder knew that time was coming to an end and said, let's just make the last one because we're like, we can't do this in six months. Do you That's know, what I think. Do you know how funny? I am going to fuck your face. Do you know how funny you have to be to transcend the blackface talking about oh, God. Using, using the full retard word? <laughs> Robert Downey, and there was a bunch of dudes that were he going through effed up shit. Black Tom Cruise, juice, the Tom Cruise, Robert playing. Downey Jr. when he was still a mess, I think was in that movie. I oh, mean, man, to, uh, to, to transcend that and all those guys bulletproof off of that movie. That movie was so hilarious. It really was. So our theories were that Tom Cruise is a great actor, but he'll never get the credit for being a great actor because he's classically handsome mm. and is the quintessential male lead. Is it because of the, the roles he's choosing, or it can be because of who he is? Because Roman Polanski just won an Oscar or some kind of award, like, last year, man. So it can't be because people may or may not think he's a hunk of garbage in real life. It has to be the roles he's used, but he's done dramatic roles. He's done funny roles. Top, he's done. He's Top given Gun you everything Maverick, you've ever wanted. Top Gun Maverick was legit. Was a legit good legit. movie. Was a really good, good movie. movie. Was a really good movie. Had a message, and even if you don't want the message, it has just I I gasm stuff. You don't have to think about nothing. Uh, the Mission Impossible movies, good movies. They entertain the shit. I love them. They, they're entertaining. They're fun. The bad guys that you like, like Philip Seymour Hoffman. Collateral, he played the bad guy. Loved him in Collateral. I do this for a living! He said he's Vincent. Like, you you killed that guy. I didn't kill him. The bullet <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jamie Foxx. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are you gonna shut up? Fuck off? Yeah, you yeah. were never gonna do it anyway. Yeah, he's great in that movie. Mm. Now that I might have nominated him for. I thought that was an awesome character. For Jamie Foxx or for Cruise. Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise playing the bad guy in that oh ultimately. And he got his comeuppance at the end. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, he he did his thing in that. Yeah. And remember when he when he first comes on screen, he's got the the gray suit on, mm. kind of like the shark skin suit. Really cool. He's got the salt and pepper yeah. hair slicked back. He's wearing a pair of super thin titanium Maui Jim sure. sunglasses that are like they must weigh about a couple ounces. Had I went out and bought those, and I still have them. And those and Maui Jays are sweet. When you watch that movie, you believe that this four foot thirteen man <laughs> could kill everybody in the room. He was a badass with a paperclip. He was a badass. He killed uh, Mark Ruffalo in that movie. Ruffalo was wow. in that movie. Remember him? Yeah, killed him. 
Uh, that was a Michael Mann movie for the you Heat fans out okay. there. We were talking about Michael Mann is really when good. you say it like that, it makes it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. He was a very very good. He was a he was a Chicago cab driver. Mm. But Michael Mann did Miami Vice. Mm. Uh, Michael Mann is very very good and very skilled at shooting L.A. at night. The sort of that I don't know if you've been out to L.A., mm. but it's very act nocturnal. Obviously, very dark. You got like the helicopters flying mm. around, planes coming in out of LAX. It's just one of those cities that at night it takes on a whole different uh, life to it. You know, freeways are busy. People, sure. There's no downtime. Bunch of cars on the freeways even yeah. at night. It's really cool. He captures that. It's a sexy city, man. Yeah, it is. It's very, very. Yeah, that's a great word. It is sexy. If we're putting, if we're putting Tom Cruise and Oscar talk, how did he not win for a few good men or Rain Man? Or Rain Man. He's a phenomenal. As much as Dustin Hoffman was great as the uh, the autistic brother, yeah. Uh, if you go back and watch it really closely, Cruz carries that entire movie and that entire without Cruz. Was that, he lead or was he was he a co? <laughs> he was without him. See, I like guys that aren't afraid to be a dick in a movie, and he was a dick yeah. in in Rain Man. His 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 character transforms. It I goes like from you... being a dick and self centered to really wanting a brother at the end. I like where you're going with and that. And he's funny. Like Tom Cruise can be funny in those in those. Who's situations. the best dick in a movie? Pause. Uh, I would say the guy that played Edward Rooney in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. All that guy. He story. had about three or four movies where he was just pitch perfect son of a bitch. He was in Beetlejuice. <laughs> he was in. Uh, he was in Howard the Duck. <laughs> he was in Howard the Duck. He was in The Hunt for Red October. He's one of the Whoa. first guys that Alec Baldwin goes to see. That uh, he goes, he puts his foot on the desk and he goes. When I was young, my daddy and I had built a shelter, blah, blah, blah. So his wow. name is Jeffrey Jones. Jeffrey Jones. Shout out and to he Jones. got blacklisted. He, he, he fell off the thing. Scientology? The child pornography. No. Yeah. Oh, no. Edward once Rooney, got, no. Yeah, and once that happened, you never saw Oh, it's it. over after it's that. It's over. It's over so after he that. had a nice little supporting career in the 90s, and oh, then no. it just went... He was in Black uh, Deadwood. Oh, and that's a stigma. Oh, you're right, what? Scott. Uh, Deadwood with HBO <laughs> show was really yeah. good. Was he? He was, wasn't he? God. Yeah, Jeffrey Jones, really funny. Wow. Actor. You're not going to shake that stigma, even if it's, it's hard. just hearsay. It's hard. Because if you say Richard Gere, there's only Gerbils. one thing popping in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's not pretty woman. I've seen no so evidence. That is so unfair. It is. It is. No. It's unfair to the gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> hey -o. There you go. There you go. Jesus. Yes, there that is go. unfair. Um, no, but I never, but he, again, really good looking mm. guy, never liked him though. I could never warm up to him as a, there are certain people that are East Coast intellectual in life and on screen, mm. and they're cold, even though they're technically good actors. James Woods. James Woods. Remember Laura Linney? Like, Laura, Laura Linney's just a great actress. Ozark. Uh, uh, Ozark, okay. all that stuff. But uh, she's okay, cold. Okay. I can't warm up to her. And actually, mm. if we're being honest, same thing with Meryl Streep. As great as she is, Meryl Streep, there's, a, cold, so? there's a coldness to her. Yeah, she's cold. She's on Mur the next Murders in the Building. Ah. Uh. What was that movie she did with um, Bruce Willis? They couldn't die. Oh, it was awful. Oh God, <laughs> you didn't like it. Nothing but trouble. Death or becomes something. her. Death becomes her. <laughs> you didn't like that, that movie. That thing was off the rails. <laughs> was it Dan Aykroyd and John Candy? Yeah. And uh, Demi Moore? Yeah. Like oh, that. oh, that's so one where they get together in a conference room and go, we got John Candy. We got Dan uh, Aykroyd. We got Meryl Streep. throw everybody we in got there. This. Look, what could possibly go wrong? This is a hit. Ah. Oh, man. <laughs> Oof. That's the worst when there's an ensemble cast and it just... The, it hits. It does. It just it, does. It happens all the time. It just does. Uh, even Monuments Men with like Bill Murray and Matt Damon and George Clooney. Guys go over to World War II, try and find monuments. Mm -hmm. it falls flat. It just falls. I can't figure yeah. it out. So, I don't know. I miss a good ensemble movie. I, I miss... I miss... There hasn't been a good 
let's make fun of all the movies movie oh, in a long yeah. time. Yeah. In a long time, yeah. man. You know, I know exactly what you Like mean. Spaceballs did it. Yeah. For a while there, those Scream movies were Naked to Gun, it. all Naked those. Gun. Yeah. Naked Gun. I, 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 OJ used to kill it. It was really funny. <laughs> OJ Simpson is so funny oh, in those things. He, I mean, the so timing of a, of a night fighter, that guy. He was funny. He was he funny. They could make those work, man. What? Those things might have been some of the funniest things going. They were so... I never... And if you saw them in the theater, there mm. are certain movies that if you see them in the theaters because yeah. of the energy of the people, you know you're a stand-up, you cannot stop laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naked Gun I saw in the theater... Laughed my ass off the entire time at the end of the show. Yeah. I was exhausted. I, like, I'd never. Oh, yeah. Very few movies I laugh out loud at in the theater, uh, but I saw that in the theater. And that Austin was Powers in the oh, theater. My gosh. I couldn't stop I laughing. I saw it in the theater. And Swingers in the theater. I could not stop laughing. I was giggling. Vince Vaughn, where are you putting him at as far as comedic actors? When he hit, it was uh, a lightning bolt. He Wedding went. Crashers might be one of the funniest. Yeah, yeah. Cool. and 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 mm. uh, and Owen Wilson, and then that was kind of it. He had a shelf life. Yeah, of he was great as that oh. Chicago guy, Ugh. and then he went to the middle to make a bunch of money, and so he started making all those yeah. rom coms. Remember that hot garbage attempt he made at being uh, Norman Bates? Psycho. Yeah, oh. it was yeah, terribly. He made some some. Uh, I don't know, not bad choices. He tried to be uh, a diverse actor. Mm. Uh, he was on a season of uh, True Blood or, or uh, no, uh, True Detective. Okay, right. I think, On yeah, HBO. Like, What's I that show so. called? True Detective. Yeah, right. right. He did an, an episode on that. He, a year of that, he was a bad okay, guy. I'm but glad you brought that up. He had a limited, he surprised me because, but then again, mm. for a dynamite comic actor, maybe your your window is only a decade. Mm. Because really, after that, Owen Wilson kind of went. He did. He was okay, but let me ask you this: because the lines are kind of blurred these days with your Netflix, with um, uh, with big screen, with small screen, whatever. You you could run the myriad, right? What is the difference? You're the expert. You know, I turn to you for these answers. Yes. What is the difference between a small screen actor? what they're bringing to the table versus a big screen actor and what they're bringing to the table. How come the cast, and I love, I love like New Girl, right? Zoe Deschanel, Lamar Morris, Max Greenfield. A lot of those folks, I've never seen them on the big screen. Like what is it about what they're doing acting wise that some people are just relegated to the small, even middle screens of Netflix and what have you? And certain people have the Tom Cruise face, the Denzel aura about them. A lot of it is a uh, a choice by the actor because even though they're technically both doing the same work, mm. the changes in lifestyle are they're dramatic differences. When you're on a movie set, you're doing one job for four to six months and you have to fly all over the world and mm. do all this and you're just grinding out films. Uh, and 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 whereas TV, you're living in Los Angeles and you're driving to a studio every day, but you could still have a normal life. You get there early, you get your lines and all that, you shoot mm. that day scenes. At the end of the day, at night or whatever, six o'clock at night, you yeah. have to go home to your family. So they're not as immersed. You may not be as immersed, but when you're on a when you when you're on a movie, you give up your life for four to six mm. months while you're shooting that movie, and you're immersed. And you're flying halfway across the world. Mm. You're away. That's why I mean, very few people make movies and have family lives. It, it, it's just sure. you know Johnny Depp is that was mm. you know that was bound to go bust up. Just the lifestyles sure. and all that stuff. Yeah, you make a lot of, of money, but you're when you're making movies, you're you're working 12, 14 hours a day and half sure. time just standing on a set sitting around. As far as the different personalities, what makes it into a movie and what doesn't? I don't know. There have been some pretty good uh, TV actors like John Hamm and, and some of the guys who played Drake sure. or Rob Madman. That guy's not a movie star. He's not. He just, he's handsome. Sure. He's good looking, but he doesn't have a uh, movie star presence. Like you said, like comics, they're born. They're really born. Nicholson is, is, is a movie star. 
Yeah. Even at this age. Gene Hackman is a movie star. He's up there. Brad Pitt is a movie star. Yeah. You just can't take your eyes off them, but they're engaging enough. They're intelligent enough. You have to be funny. Yeah. You have to be warm and charming. Yeah. You have to be real. I think you're watching intelligence. I think you're watching their mm-hmm. brain. Because one of the things that uh, Sidney Pollack or some of these other guys have said, Michael Caine, that book that Mike Scott and I have read, the camera doesn't lie. The camera reads thoughts. Mm-hmm. So if you're a good uh, cerebral actor and you like to think on screen and all that stuff, camera will pick that up. Yeah. That's why guys like Russell Crowe are really interesting. Um, when you watch Russell Crowe and Gladiator, you're inspired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did a and he went and him and to watch him in Denzel and American Gangster is fucking great. That's a flawed character. That, that, that Richie is. Robbins character. He that was is. he was just as awful as Lucas. And it was beautifully shot, showing. So that's what I liked about um, American Gangster is very similar to what I liked about say the The Wire, is that it it took the good guys. And showed their flaws. That's and it what took I like. The bad guys and showed their virtues. You yeah. know what I mean? I love that. I love that, and that's why TV got so engaging uh, with The Sopranos and Mad Men mm. and whatever else came out. They were willing to take their lead characters and show them as uh, flawed individuals, but mm. you still liked them. Like I yeah. like Tony Soprano. I was rooting for the guy the whole time. To goes be... back to the to the to the bad guy stuff when they blur those lines. And then you believe this. so they just had um, uh, uh, Phoenix Joaquin Phoenix yeah. did his turn as the Joker, right? Yeah. And when you're sitting there watching him, which by the way the Joker is just what, what, what was the um, taxi taxi driver, right? Yep. Yeah. And uh, they both even had De Niro in them, right? De Niro was the talk show host. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I never thought about. Yeah, but that. they're the same. Essentially, they're the same movie. Good point. Outcast is is riding around he's manic yeah and then he gets something in his head yeah. and then boom he goes out in a blaze of glory in the end right yeah you're talking about the king of comedy too ah de niro is the king of comedy you ever see that ah, same I, thing forever ago. exactly right de niro forever was an ago. outsider tried to make friends with the uh, king of comedy you see these things in my life and uh i use them to make people laugh <laughs> <laughs> he hey but so it, i mean uh, Hey, Robert De Niro here today. Right. You gotta, you gotta get the nostril breath. I mean, I mean. I mean so yeah, if you see I mean, me coming around that corner, is, oh. you just gonna walk out on this girl without saying goodbye. That's the. This, <laughs> there's a flip side to that point. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get coffee. We gotta have coffee. You <laughs> gotta, and I mean, <laughs> you guys gotta get two big things of coffee. <laughs> oh man! Who, who, who is the Folsom for three? In the hole for two? Do you, do you put Nick Neal as tough as they say? You putting De Niro over Pacino? Uh no, they're the same. They're the that generation. One A and, and yeah, and, that's and too high. You can't predict them. They're just so. Sam Rothstein. I mean, you 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 give it to you you give it to uh 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 to Pacino on like he'll take an iconic role and it's cemented in the culture, right? Yeah. But Donnie Brasco. As... <sighs> Donnie Brasco playing lefty, playing lefty and Donnie Brasco. Wise guy's always right. Even when he's wrong, he's right. Don, you got to get yourself a pair of pants. Wow. Can't come in here talking like you're going to a rodeo. Michael Manson. Oh, wait, did we say Michael Manson? No, who's, who's, the, who's the guy that played Sonny Black? <laughs> that was Michael um, Madsen. Michael Madsen. Played the original Vincent Vega in uh, Reservoir yeah, Dogs. Yeah. yeah. Don Lefty, I love the guy. <laughs> Get me going in the can. That is something I do not forget. Hey, hey. That is something I will never, ever forget. He said, uh... Yeah, go to the bow. <laughs> the, the bow, that's the stunt. The bow, the stunt. I, I don't even... I'm just disgusted with you right now. I don't know, maybe um, maybe a couple dollars or uh, whatever. Send a couple fazus up yeah, there. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's for Gazy. I tell you... Nothing but nothing but right. Yeah, I mean, even a dog gets a piece of a sunny side of the sidewalk every now and again. He says it's, it's Fugazi. It's a fake. I know, I know Fugazi. I know Fugazi. 
<laughs> it's, a, it's a fake. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> you want to see some beautiful thing? Yeah, that's a beautiful. It ain't my beautiful thing. You got a girlfriend? Yeah, marry her. <laughs> and then uh, they go to the, go. They go beat that guy up in that Serpico. That uh, that guy. Uh, that that cut that blonde hair dude. Oh that yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and that that guy's a, a Terry Serpico. And that Serpico is the actual Frank Serpico's kid. The, the cop. Oh, it's true. Um, no, De, De Niro and, and, and Pacino came out of New York at exactly the same time, <coughs> exactly the same age, mm. auditioned for the same parts, mm. and uh, the only difference is, uh, you know, the, De Niro hooked up with, uh, with Scorsese. You ever see De Niro's auditions for The Godfather? I didn't. De, uh, De Niro auditioned for uh, Sonny, okay, The Godfather, and there's uh, there's film of him in his screen test, mm. and it's young De Niro going, "Why, well, well, you gotta, they're gonna come up, and what are you afraid of? You're gonna get blood all over you. I you should, and it's gonna buy the yeah. boom." And he's doing Sonny's yeah, lines, yeah, yeah. but as De Niro. And uh, it would have been cool to see what, sure. but a boom, they're gonna blow your brains all over your nice <laughs> Ivy League soon. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever want to see De Niro <laughs> biting somebody's hand off. Of <laughs> <laughs> it would ruin the image. <laughs> or in the in the meeting rooms where his dad's there and everyone's got to behave because the mm. Godfather's there. Yo, Santino, what do you think of this? <laughs> that, that's a uh, a lot of money in that. Part. Was Marlon Brando everything people make him up to be? I think he had slipped quite a bit uh, by his, his 50s, but uh, he was mm. in his prime. You're an errand boy. by store clerks to collect the bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then he. What, what did he do after The Godfather? Anything? Uh, Superman movies? He, did, he was a he was a big hologram head in the clouds in Superman. And Sup Jarrell. And that right, was, son of Jarrell, and that was Jarrell. But even then, he was getting like that was really about big. It. it was like, yeah. oh, well, no, I, I gotta put you in this pod. And mm -hmm. we're gonna take you to Earth, and you're gonna have a good time down there. But, but, but I hear the allure is that he changed acting, right? That he was like method. possibly one of the first ones to do method. Yep. I'm and then sorry. acting changed from from that. What was it, the Stanislavski method or something? Yeah, he was the first to come out of that acting mm -hmm. school. So he he was a pioneer. He uh, because before that, people mm -hmm. talked like. Shakespeare and you ever watch those movies from the oh, 30s yeah, and 40s? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the police will be here any minute. You yeah, can't hey, do that. See, yeah, 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 see? Yeah, yeah. I got your picture in the paper, see? Yeah. But then before that, and then that was that, and then he was Mr. Natural. Sure, he sure. He was the first, believe it or not, he was the first one to think of that, like just be natural. Yeah. Has there been another change, like another there was altering? One. Act. There was one, but he came and went so fast. If you blinked, you missed him. What was that? His name was Mickey Rourke. Oh. And he caught fire in the early 80s. To, and, and again, only lasted about a decade and flamed Rourke, out. Man. But he was, when, in his prime, he was the next Brando. He was that guy. He was but he flamed too. out. He just yeah. had too much, couldn't handle it. Too much anxiety and expectation. But he was mm. freaking awesome. Mm. Could match that intensity and all that stuff, but he came and went. He's still alive. He's still around. But he did that wrestler. That was that. He uh, he did uh, Pope of Greenwich Village Diner. Iron Man Two. Angel Heart. Iron Man, Iron Man two. two. Wow. Yeah. Um, just a great uh, uh, the movie about Chinatown. Year of the Dragon. Mm. Um, Michael Cimino with the the sexy movie Nine and a Half Weeks. With mm. Kim Basinger. He did a movie with Jet Li and Dennis Rodman. Yeah. I forget, he did all kinds of stuff. He did a movie <laughs> with Tupac Shakur. Yeah. With Lisa Bonet and Angel Hart. Um, I thought he was dynamite. I just thought he was amazing. What was it about? So, um, I mean, we, we were both going through that period, the 80s. Hyper violence, hyper drugs. Yep. Hyper, everything was hyper to the max. I mean, you take RoboCop, a film like RoboCop. You're not getting more violent with an actual I think story. it was the decade itself. It was a decade of Reagan, easy money, Reaganomics. credit, Reaganomics, a lot of money, easy lot of credit, 
that was when Michael Jackson came on the scene. A lot of coke, a lot of everything. Everything was intense. Yeah. Wall Street. Remember the movie uh, Wall Street? Uh, that yeah. epitomized the 80s. And it was just, they called them the go-go 80s. They were just nonstop money, money, money. Mm. And the country became really conservative. And it was Reaganomics and make money. And that was the yuppies and the suits and the suspenders and the goopy hair. Yeah. And my brother was a stockbroker in the 80s. Inappropriate. Everything that you, anything you could say, there was no boundaries. You just had to take it. Yeah. Like whatever, <clears throat> whatever group you represented that is, is held down and oppressed, you just had to take it from whoever was saying horrible things about you. It was, and yeah, keep there was on no, going. Yeah, it was, the 80s but were not about social was, justice. No, it was not, not about, No one had the time for it. But the, the films and the movies and the art was about social justice. It was, but what it was all about social justice as long as America won. It was such a oh, pro-American yeah. decade. So let's, like, all, the, all the bad guys were actually Top like, Gun was like, America, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Wall Street, America, make money. Uh, all the Rocky movies, especially oh, yeah, when you yeah, went yeah, to yeah. Russia and Rocky IV. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. like, America, like, man. Lethal Weapon. Yeah, yeah. 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 All that, yeah. See, because Stallone was doing his thing. Yep, we pretended Arnold Schwarzenegger. Rambo. We pretended Arnold Schwarzenegger was American. <laughs> <laughs> With Rambo, we kind of won the Vietnam War. We kind of yeah, fought yeah, yeah. it again and won it. <laughs> um, all that stuff. So the '80s was just one of those fun rides. It oh, didn't yeah. mean anything, and was just. Uh, but it was. Uh, Island, you only get one of these two guys to watch their filmography until the sun goes down permanently. Stallone, Schwarzenegger. Oh, God. No third options? <laughs> I mean, if you want to throw in, like, the arbitrary Bruce or the arbitrary Mel or, or whoever you, you want to I want to go with. Schwarzenegger because he made a nice pivot to comedy and he kind of made me laugh here and there. Mm. But that's pretty limited. Uh, I'm going to go Schwarzenegger only because I get to watch... Uh, they were the best bad movies ever created. I watched them. I, I oh, had a good time. I still watch it. What was the one where he had to run and get off that uh, jungle island before it exploded because of the alien? The Predator. Predator. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you ugly motherfucker. Yeah. That's fun. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun shit. Did you know how hard it is to make a movie where it's you, three other commandos in a jungle fighting against 427 other people who were born and raised there, and you throw a machete through a guy, he flies four feet off the ground, sticks to a wall, and you go, stick around. <laughs> <laughs> and then... I still have to believe the rest of the movie. <laughs> and I do. You know how hard that is? Who had the idea to take this Australian, Austrian, not Australian, Austrian sure, sure. bodybuilder and say, we can make movies with this guy and make this work? Tell you what, your first three movies, we don't even want you to talk. That accent. Right, talks. right. I think they had them go <laughs> we're over. Gonna make, we're going to make a good trillion dollars off of you. You so know, keep this up, and you might be governor of California marries, one day. He marries a Kennedy. <laughs> he marries the hot Kennedy Shriver, whatever her name was, yeah. and uh, Maria. Maria, and then ends up becoming governor of New York. It's a phenomenal he's, country. Like he's he's. You banged used to you used to have to want to be him. Of course, Scott. Of course, you banged the housekeeper. Of course, yeah. wouldn't you? Not a governor. <laughs> All right, guys, we gotta wrap this up. We, wrap. we could go on for six hours. Scott, you let us go late. Thank you. Uh, this is Chris and Mike at night. Mike Knight, give me your shit. Uh, Mike Knight comedy on all the things. If you want my professional opinion on movies and other things, please check me out. Please check out Chris because this this man a wealth of knowledge. You're gonna see him. On many projects coming up the camera loves them you have to see the project i have an opinion as well but it's an amateur opinion not professional yeah yeah you know anyways we're having a blast tonight thanks to our executive producer and show creator scott anderson uh what's the name of that mic uh, that camera thing the... so i'm wearing the, the what? road this is the road yep road, road. this is the road Right, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna talk later about how fantastic these microphones are. It's a Muppet on, on our on our iPhone 14s Pro. Yeah, Muppet on a microphone, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about the the, the steady. We're gonna talk about the steady shots that we got later on on our iPhone Gimbal. 14s. 
from this gimbal. DJI gimbal. All right, DJI all good gimbal. stuff, all technological uh, tools for the trade. Scotty, thank you again. Uh, live from uh, Workshop 4200, Studio 28th, Dog and Pony Show. Chris and Mike. Mike Knight, Chris Kelsch, Chris and Mike at night. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you at the movies. See you at the movies.